In this lesson, we'll learn how to apply realistic lens flares to our Cinema 4D lights. Okay, so in this scene, we have our alleyway, and we have a couple of lights set up here. These are just basic spotlights. So if I come in here and just press Alt-R on my keyboard to do a quick render, we can see uh, everything is pretty standard. So what I might do is come in here and go to my interactive render region settings and turn off this gadget overlay just to make this a little bit easier for you to see. So overall, our lights are looking pretty nice, shadows are looking pretty good, but one of the things that is missing that can sort of add a little bit of realism to this is lens flares. So usually, if we're taking this with a real camera, these really, really bright light sources will start to cause some uh, artifacting to happen inside our camera lens, and uh, right now that is something that is sort of missing. Now we can apply this if we go to the light source itself. In this case, let's go to this orange light up here. And if we go into our lens, we have the ability to apply this lens flare. So right now, this is set to inactive. If we open this up, we have a few pre-built options that we can choose from where we can come in here and start to uh, sort of build our own custom. But let's start with a couple of these basic presets. We come in here and first enable, let's say, something like this wide angle. Now, all of a sudden, we can start to see a little bit of a flare being applied to this light source. Now, something to keep in mind is that when it comes to applying some sort of a lens flare, uh, especially if you're going to be applying it to a spotlight or something like that, we have to make sure that the center of our light source is actually visible. So what that means is right now this uh, spotlight is opened up far enough or its cone of light has been opened up far enough to where we can actually see inside of that. Now, if we come in here and I'll disable my camera lock. So if I were to... Again, let's say render this. We can see that lens flare. But if I orbit the camera around to the point where this cone of light is now sort of angled downward, that should actually be blocking out the lens flare. And that's exactly what's happening. So whenever using a spotlight or something like that, you just have to make sure that you can actually see inside that cone. And at that point, the lens flare will become visible. Now, if you use something like an omnidirectional light, uh, there is no cone or anything to block out the light. So an omnidirectional light should have its lens flare visible almost all the time. But uh, back to our light source itself, if we come in here and start to adjust this. We have our wide angle, which looks pretty nice. We have a basic star that we could do. Uh, lots and lots of different uh, effects in here. So these all render after the uh, basic render or the main render is complete, so you'll see it goes through the render process and then adds in this lens flare on top, sort of as a, a post process. Now, we also have the ability to add uh, what are called reflexes. So we have the glow, which is the uh, glow source, but then we also have reflexes, which are sort of the uh, little balls of light that you can start to see coming off of our flare. So with the reflexes, we set that to uh, basically anything that we want. Now we can start to see these additional little artifacts start to appear. And again, with this, we have lots of different presets that we can uh, go with, just as a way of adding a little bit more realism to that. So let's try something like that high 8. I like the way that that looks. Now at this point, we could call it a day and uh, call this good. But what we could also do is come in here and start to make some adjustments to this. So let's say for this high 8, uh, everything looks good, but maybe I want that glow to be a little bit stronger. Well, right now, the glow intensity is based on my light intensity. So as my light intensity starts to go down, we should see that the lens flare starts to really, really decrease as well. And at this point, you can see it's almost not even visible. So if I crank up my light intensity, now my lens flare starts to come back. But if I have my lighting at a point where it is acceptable and looking about the way that I want, but my lens flare is not as strong as I might like. Well, what I could do is go into my lens, and let's go into the glow, and I'll click Edit. Now here we can start to get into some settings that will control pretty much every aspect of my glow. So we have different elements that we can start to add in here. So right now we have our glow set to Element 1, um, and that's really sort of giving us a little bit more of a feedback of exactly what this glow looks like. Because right now, it's sort of hard to tell with uh, all these other objects in the scene, uh, other things like that. It can sometimes be difficult to see exactly what that glow is going to look like. So this gives us a little bit more of a, a feedback of what exactly we're going to have.
But if we, let's say, maybe wanted fewer beams on this, we could start to alter that. And now we get fewer beams. We could also maybe start to increase that thickness if we wanted these beams to be a little bit stronger. And again, we can now start to sort of see that. Again, it becomes a little bit more difficult to actually see that effect here. So that's why this becomes really, really useful. We can also start to come in here and adjust some of these other options. Um, different elements that we can start to apply to this. Let me just quickly come in here and turn off my interactive render regions just so that this is going to be a little bit easier to work with. There we go. Um, so we can come back in here and we have different elements that we can start to change. Let's go back and we can maybe alter uh, the color of this glow to maybe match a little bit more closely with the color of our light. So right now this glow element 1, that's sort of this outermost glow. So we could set it to type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, and that uh, really sort of controls the overall effect of this glow. Or we could set it to inactive if we wanted to. Um, so let's say we wanted to get this maybe a little bit more kind of orange to help match up sort of the color of our illumination. So we could do that. We can come in here and uh, down here we have our beams, which is uh, sort of these rings out here. So this is where we can start to control what those beams are going to look like. Again, we can also maybe come in here and start to adjust the size of those beams. We give them a little bit stronger thickness, more breaks, and things like that. So this becomes, again, a really, really powerful uh, feature to have. Maybe come in here. You see what that looks like. There we can really start to see what those look like if uh, we change that to something other than black. So definitely come in here and spend some time playing around with this. You can get some really, really detailed and really, really fine results. We can also start to add in maybe things like rings if we wanted sort of an outer ring to that. A little bit more of a rainbow to that. So definitely some, some different options that we can start to come in here and play with and lots and lots of uh, features and things like that that we can start to add in here. So let's for now go ahead and click OK. Again, Alt-R on my keyboard to see what that looks like. Now we have that little bit stronger flare. We come in here if we wanted to take our brightness for that flare and maybe crank that up. That should increase the strength of our flare without interfering with the overall intensity of our light. So we can now come in here and start to fine-tune that a little bit more if we want to. Okay, so that's a look at how we can start to add these really realistic lens flares to our Cinema 4D light sources.